Today we have a, a special video about where we are today in prophecy. Now there's only one place in the whole Bible that I know of that I could point to it, be, it happening right now. Um, there's a lot of prophecies where people could say we are here, we are there. Uh, it's very symbolic and a lot of the prophecies you'll find that it's hard to say um, you could sort of get an idea where we're at but to say exactly what's going to happen next is pretty difficult but in this prophecy is pretty intriguing because of what's happening now in Gaza and um, this prophecy is absolutely about now so we will take a look at it today don't forget to like share subscribe and uh, hit your notification bell to see more of these videos all right okay i have a new microphone here so i'm still getting used to it so pardon me if the sound isn't the greatest so we're going to take a look at here at isaiah chapter 11 now, right now we're further, way further down here on this prophecy, but I'm just going to breeze through it. Okay, so it's talking about the day of the Lord again. I've said this many times in my channel. The day of the Lord is a repeating theme in the Bible. The day of the Lord was the day when Judah was overthrown by Babylon. The day of the Lord was the day when the northern kingdom was overthrown by Assyria. The day of the Lord is the, was the day when uh, Jesus was crucified. And the day of the Lord was the day when the second temple was destroyed by the Romans. And the great day of the Lord is also the second coming. And it has many applications. So in that day is the day of the Lord. Okay. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse which shall stand for an ensign of the people. Now this is talking about Jesus. The root of Jesse Jesse was the father of David. The root of Jesse refers to the son of David that will be king forever over Israel that was prophesied to David. Now, uh, the root of Jesse, and Jesus fulfilled this prophecy. In that day, there shall be a root of Jesse, or someone from the line of David, which shall stand for an ensign of the people, and to it, or to that person, to him shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. So this is about Jesus. The Gentiles seek after Jesus. And it shall come to pass in that day. Now, a day could be as a thousand years. Um, it's the day of the Lord. It, it's, it's a great day. And there are several of these. So it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people. So uh, what's this talking about? Well, it happened once that God sent off his, his people off into Babylon in ancient times the, the, the tribe of Judah mainly and the other tribes that were with them and then they came back under the Persians they were allowed to come back and rebuild the city of Jerusalem and rebuild their kingdom and eventually they became um, the, the people of Judea and it was like a province in Persia but eventually it became a nation of its own because the Greeks overthrew Persia 
and then the Jews rebelled against the Greeks under the Maccabees and uh, that began the Hasmonean dynasty which was a kingdom of Israel it, but it was called the kingdom of Judea and uh, so that was the first recovery of the remnant of the people because it was only a remnant that returned from Babylon so he says he shall set his hand again a second time to recover the remnant of his people so the second time would be the the second temple was what they rebuilt when they came back from Babylon that was Herod's temple that was destroyed by the Romans so there's going to be a second time they come back from that destruction, from the second destruction. So that happened in 1948 with the Six Day War where the, the nation of Israel once again was born after 1948 years of, of or, or minus 70, which would be 1800 and uh, 80 years or so of not b being a nation in that place. So he'll recover a second time to recover the remnant of his people which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam, Shiner and Hamath and from the islands of the sea. So what, what are these places named for? Well, when uh, the Six Day War happened in 1948, that's when the Arab nations stood up, uh, when, when, the, when the, the British pulled out of, of the British mandate in Palestine, the Jews had already a lot of them had already moved there and purchased land from the Arabs. And they were afraid because there was a, always a lot of skirmishes happening and they were, you know, um, the, there was a lot of animosity from the Arabs and they were afraid because there was talk that the Arabs were going to wipe them out, wipe them off the land once the British left. So as soon as the British left, the, the, the Jews declared themselves a sovereign nation of Israel. And when that happened, the Arab states all got together and all attacked. Uh, to name which ones, I think it was Egypt, Iraq, Syria, Jordan, and Lebanon, I think. I'm just going by memory here, but they all attacked at once, and Israel actually gained land in that war. It was like a miracle. They were surrounded, they were outnumbered, and they gained the land, and that's when the UN stepped in, and that began the UN mandate over Israel, and it's still happening. It's like one of those bureaucratic things that never ends. So, when that happened, okay, the UN mandate happened and froze the situation where it was as far as land goes. Then the next move, the, now because of the war, a lot of Arabs were de displaced. And uh, that's when Gaza got settled and the West Bank. And there, there was a lot of uh, displaced Arabs from the war. But what happened was the Arab nations they expelled the Jews from their land. So um, there was thousands of Jews living in Iraq that were expelled, thousands of Jews living in Egypt, thousands of Jews living in Lebanon, and all of these places that they, they had communities all over the Middle East since Roman times. And in, and in Iraq, since the the... the the taking of the Jews by Babylon since the 700 BC um, or be 586 BC so they've had all these Jew com Jewish communities all over in the Arab nations they were all expelled 
on the same day. And so naturally they all went to Israel. And when they saw that, then the Arabs, there started to be a UN mandate to help the displaced Arabs uh, that were around Israel from the war. There was um, refugee camps. Well, a lot of Arabs also came from the Arab nations and filled those refugee camps because they wanted, they thought they would get the free land because there was going to be a land settlement and they'd move there to get free land. So the, the settlements, the, the refugee camps, just ballooned overnight full of people. And I think the Arab nations actually helped that happen too. So this is the, 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 pro, the roots of the problems we have today with, the, with that area. So this is where he's saying the, the, the remnant which will be left from Assyria and from Egypt, these are all the Jews that came back that were expelled from the Arab nations and went back to Israel. Pathros, from Cush, which would be like Ethiopia, from Elam, which would be um, southern Iran right now, southeastern Iran, from Shinar, which is Iraq, Mesopotamia, from Hamath, um, I think that's like Syria, and from the islands of the sea, that would be like the, Gr the Greek Isles. Okay. So this is, um, this event is all these people, all these Jews, going back to Israel. And that happened in 1948-49, uh, um, when this UN mandate was being established. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations. He. Who's he? That's Jesus. That's the, the messi messianic leader, right? He set up an ensign for the nations, a standard like a sign, come to me, the nations will come to him. And he shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah. So what's the difference between Israel and Judah? Well, Judah represents the bloodline of Judea. That's that's the nation of Judea, the, the Hasmonean dynasty. There's a bloodline of of those, that race of people, and that's Judah. And Israel is actually a spiritual name. Um, Israel represents the people of God, no matter who they are in the world any people that are the people of God. You see, because it's not by blood, it's by spirit uh, to be a people of God. So Judah, it's like even in ancient times, they were not all God's people because God destroyed many of them for being not his people. And they worshiped other gods and he rejected them for that. But there was always people in the nation who were with God, and those are God's people. But the ones who are not with him, they are not God's people, even though they are of the bloodline. Um, so Judah represents that bloodline of people, that, that race, okay? Of Jews, we would call them today, right? Um, Israel represents those part of the Jews who are God's people and part of all the other nations also. He's called all nations. So the, the spiritual members of God's people, that's Israel. Okay? And he will gather them and the dispersed of Judah and the outcasts of Israel and he will gather them from the four corners of the earth. So this is a global event. The envy of Ephraim shall depart. Now Ephraim is, uh, that represents the Christian nations, as in the video that uh, 
I'll display the video right here that I did on it called the, J the Day of Jezreel. I did a whole series on Ephraim and Jezreel is number six out of the seven videos I made. And that one explains how Ephraim is the uh, Christian nations. Okay, the envy of Ephraim. Well, the, e the Christian nations envied the Jews because the Jews had the ancient name as being God's people. And in medieval times, there was uh, the, the Western Europe uh, pretty much persecuted the Jews quite a bit because they killed Jesus and things like that. Well, that kind of has gone in the past now for the most part. So that the envy of Ephraim shall depart. Ephraim no longer acts that way towards the Jews. And the Christian nations have a certain amount of respect for the Jews because they believe in the same God, right? Okay. So the envy of Ephraim departs. And the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. So anyone who is against Judah, Judah, remember, this is that race. It's not, it, this is the race of Jews. So the adversaries of them shall be cut off. And Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. Now that, this is another thing that's been happening, is that in Judah, there's a lot of uh, people who are starting to recognize Jesus as the Messiah, as uh, this important figure in the Bible, uh, whether they call him the Messiah or something else, they recognize that the Gospels was an event, a biblical portion that is talked about in the prophets. It's a, they're called Messianic Jews, um, that's what I usually hear them identify themselves as. So that's another thing. Ju Judah shall not vex Ephraim or curse them be because of taking their book. And, uh, you know, there, there used to be a lot of animosity both ways between Christians and Jews. So that, that's kind of been, been greatly diminished both ways. Okay? And then they, Ephraim and Judah, the Christian nations and the Jewish nation, they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines towards the west. Well, what's the west? The west of Israel? Wouldn't that be Gaza? It's the west. The west bank is the west bank of the Jordan, which is on the east side of Israel, basically. It's the west bank of the Jordan River. But west of Israel is Gaza. That's the only nation west of Israel. Okay. And that's the, they claim to be the Philistines. And if there are any Philistines, if there's any bloodline left of the Philistines, that is the area that they would be. Because the Philistines... Uh, they, that nation of the Philistines in ancient times, they had five cities, uh, Ekron, Escalon, Gaza, Gat, and, and um, in that same area. I think uh, Ekron is in Israel now. It's just, uh, just north of Gaza. Uh, but if there is any Philistines left, that is where you would find them, in Gaza, in that area, because that was where the Philistines' homeland was at that time, in ancient times. So they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines towards the west. They shall spoil them of the east together. So of the east, they shall lay their hand. So who are those of the east? Well, of the east of Israel, that would be the West Bank, or it could be Jordan, or Saudi Arabia, or uh, even Syria, Damascus. Uh, so 
Well, God names them here. They shall lay their hand upon Edom and Moab, and the children of Ammon shall obey them. Well, who's Edom and Moab? I would say this represents, um, Edom represents those who hate the Jews and want to drive them out of their land. Okay? And Moab is the same way. And, and Moab is more of, of uh, false, represents false deities. And they also join up with these haters. The, the, the false deities, like all the people uh, of, um, protesting in the universities, they don't necessarily care about Muslims, but they just hate Israel. So that would be more like Moab, and they, they worship themselves or you know whatever they worship. They're not really religious people, where Edom is a religious people, and they but they hate the Jews too. So you sort of that's how I look at that. And the children of Ammon, which would be the nation of Jordan, which is a fairly easy to get along with as, as far as Arab nations go and they have a lot of refugee camps in Jordan and and they seem to most of the time be just trying to help so the children of Ammon which is the capital of Jordan shall obey them obey them Ephraim and Judah the Christian nations namely USA and Israel and the Lord shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea. What is the tongue of the Egyptian sea? To me, and with his mighty wind, he shall shake his hand over the river and shall smite it in the seven streams and make men go over it with dry shoes or with dry feet. Um, to me, that's talking about the Suez Canal. You can't walk from Israel to Egypt right now because the Suez Canal is in the way. Um, it used to be able to walk through there, um, and there was a few lakes there, lakes of reeds, that kind of made a little string of lakes in ancient times, and then it went uh, then there was a Red Sea. Well, they dug all that out, and and uh, I think Egypt did that, and it, and it was they made the Suez Canal. So that I would say that that's what that to me looks like. That's what the tongue of the Egyptian Sea is talking about, because he's saying when a mighty wind shakes his hand over the river and smites it in the seven streams and make men go over with dry foot. There shall be a highway for the remnant of his people which shall be left from Assyria like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. So um, these people will be able to walk to Israel. So, but it seems to be that they're coming from Assyria and from Egypt to go into Israel and they'll be walking just as they did when they left Egypt in ancient times. And in that day, it's chapter 12 now. O oh Lord, I will praise you. Though you were angry with me, your anger is turned away, and you comfort me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord, this is the Tetragrammon, Adonai, is my strength and my song. He has also become my salvation. Therefore, with joy, you shall draw water out of the wells of salvation. And in that day, you will say, Praise the Lord, 
call upon his name, declare his doings among the people, make mention that his name is exalted, sing to the Lord, for he has done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. When it becomes obvious to everyone how powerful God really is, cry out and shout, you inhabitants of Zion, that's Jerusalem, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of you. So that's my take on, you know, the, the, the obvious prophe prophecy that's not really symbolic is Isaiah chapter 11. 